Okay, in this video we're gonna do this quick little problem that I saw posted online somewhere and I really liked. Uh, it says, if a squared plus a plus one equals zero, we wanna find a to the 98th plus a to the 97th plus a to the 96th plus a to the 95th plus a to the 94th. Um, so let's see what we can do with this. Uh, what I like about this problem is that it's kind of like non-traditional um, and you don't attack it directly, you kind of attack it indirectly. So we're given that a squared plus a plus one equals zero. And if you've done a lot of stuff with um, factoring maybe recently, uh, that looks like part of a difference of cubes. So I think to myself, um, a cubed minus one would be a minus one times a squared plus a plus one. So we can use that fact. We can take our given and just multiply it by a minus one. So I'm gonna say that a minus one times a squared plus a plus one must also equal zero. Um, and from there, we can replace the left-hand side with a cubed minus one. So a cubed minus one is equal to zero. If that's the case, then we actually know that a cubed is equal to one. We still don't really know what a is. Um, and if you look at it, a is definitely not one. So it must be one of the uh, complex roots of one. Uh, but we don't actually need to know that to solve the problem, I don't think. But we do know that a cubed is equal to one. Now there's another thing that we know. There's actually several things we know because a squared plus a plus one is equal to zero. Um, and this is kind of an, a unique thing to do. We can just rearrange that and we can say that uh, I'm gonna subtract one from both sides of the original given and get a squared plus a is equal to negative one. Um, so we have these two pieces of information. I think those are enough to actually just solve the problem. So let's look at our original thing. I'm gonna factor it kind of cleverly. So I'm not just gonna take something out universally, although I do think you could solve it by doing that as well. I'm gonna instead kind of factor by grouping. So I'll group the first two things I can take out a to the 96th. Like I could take out a to the 97th, but I don't wanna do that because if I take out a to the 96th, I get a squared plus a, which I know is negative one. Then we have uh, the last three things I'm gonna group. I'll take out a to the 94th, and I'm doing that again because uh, we have things that we can substitute for certain values. So that'll leave me with a squared plus a plus one, which I know from the original given is equal to zero. So that's what I'm doing this for. I'm trying to like make sure that I'm using things that I've seen before. A to the 96th is um, by properties of exponents, it's a cubed raised to the 32nd power, um, right? Because of power to a power, you multiply the exponents. And then we know that a squared plus a from this box is negative one. And then a to the 94th, I have absolutely no idea what it is, but that's okay because um, a to the 94th is being multiplied by a squared plus a plus one, which is the given information up here, which is zero. So we don't need to know what a to the 94th is because it's just times zero. Now we have um, a cubed we found before was equal to one. That's kind of like the really inspirational step, I think, like if you don't see that, this method's not gonna work for you. Um, but that means we have one to the 32nd being multiplied by negative one, and then uh, the second part just drops out because zero times nine, eight to the 94th is zero. So one to the 32nd is definitely one, and times negative one is negative one overall. I think that's the value. I really like this problem. I think it's neat. Gives you a reason to use a difference of cubes. Uh, I hope this was helpful, and good luck.